sugar wall. Sugar dog. Sugar dog. That's it. It's not that far. It's walking distance. Yeah? Yeah. Uh, Hare Krishna, everyone. So today we have one more special guest, uh, Sri Rajmohan Das Prabhu, and uh, he has done his BTEC from IIT Bombay and uh, his master's in quantum computing from UIC. And uh, today he's here to give us some thoughts on spirituality. And uh, uh, he has authored multiple books, and one of which is Gita Sutra's 18 Life Essentials. So without further ado, we welcome. Him. Is this a mic? Yes. <coughs> Bend over. Let us speak like this. Om Agyanati Mirandasya Jana Anjana Shalakaya Chakshuru Militam Yena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Mano Bhishtam Stapitam Ye Nabhutale Swayam Rupa Kadamayam Dadatiswa Padantikam Vandeham Shri Guru Shri Yutapadakamalam Shri Guru Vaishnavam Sha Shri Rupam Sagrajata Sahagana Raghunathan Vitam Tam Sajivam Sadvaitam Savadutam Parijana Sahitam Krishna Chaitanya Devam Shri Radha Krishna Padan Sahagana Lita Shri Vishakhan Vitamsha Hey Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Bandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Gopika Kanta Radha Kanta Namostute Tapta Kanchana Gaurangi Radhe Vinda Vanishwari Vrishabhano Sude Devi Pranamami Hari Priye Vancha Kalpatarubhyasya Kripa Sindhu Bya Evacha Patitana Pavane Bio Vaishnave Bio Namo Namaha Sri Krishna Chaitanya Prabhu Nityananda Sri Advaita Gadadara Divasadi Gaura Bhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama, Hare Rama, Rama Rama, Hare Hare. Hare Krishna, it's my great honor and uh, privilege to be at IIT, Illinois Institute of Technology. And I passed out from IIT, but not here. <laughs> back in India and uh, once there was a crew uh, shooting crew that came to interview our batch you might have seen one episode on all IITs so they're asking us what does IIT stand for everyone knows back in India IIT stands for Institute of Indian Institute of Technology but they wanted to know from students what does IIT stand for. And I remember one of my friends saying, Institute of Infinite Torture. <laughs> <laughs> and 
when we do come into a situation, a college, how many are first years here? Just came in fresh into this college. Second, sophomores, graduates of this college. Okay. And guess that that are just with like I am a guest here. Mm -hmm. So there's a whenever we enter into a situation, a new uh, space, the mind goes on a overboard. It starts to think a lot what's going to happen when you enter United States. When you're just at the immigration, I was just there four days back. This particular uh, space comes up with all types of thoughts. And this particular space is constantly working. It's constantly buzzing. That's why I've shown here. And uh, back in India, I do this kind of uh, demo, I just ask everyone to just take their hands, take your hands, just put it here <coughs> and just start to become like a bumblebee saying <laughs> Okay, you can stop. What's happening inside, I just try to put it out. In fact, there's a whole pranayama uh, in the in, in the Ashtanga Yoga called as Brahmari. Anyone, any of you do Brahmari Pranayam? So where you just close all your inlets and just make the sound of Om reverberate, which appears to be like what we did now, but it's a very conscious practice that just settles in a lot of thoughts, a lot of the factory. And there are around 80,000 thoughts that are manufactured every day in our brain. And most of these thoughts uh, result in a dissatisfactory life. If a life that is on a, where many of the thoughts that we do have in this real estate, in this very valuable space, are not actually ours. They have been implanted by society, by, by fears of the future. And it said very few of the thoughts that we carry actually have some productive and uh, uh, utility value. And you're all going to be engineers. You're all going to be, may not be working in factories, but definitely uh, it's spaces where you're going to bring up lot of tools that will make you know, things better. We have all types of gadgets now. That, and spirituality Bhagavad Gita is that science that is not just about making things better. It's about making people better. And more and me a graduate of IIT Bombay and uh, you know, studied my quantum uh, physics at a sister university here, UIC, people do ask me, what happened? That you had a great career and you just gave all that up. The, one of the most common things that they <coughs> think is that maybe you had a heartbreak. And that heartbreak was so tough that you just wanted to give all that up and become a monk. Was it the thought behind this action? And others uh, tend to think that, you know, there is, this is, you no, know, you're just getting, you your wasted one precious seat, one precious visa. But the whole purpose of, you know, monkhood or me taking the Gita is to help people fix their minds, fix their lives. Because when a thing breaks, you can either replace it 
or you can fix it. But more people break down, the more cases of you know, mental health issues, then things that break down. And once the person uh, breaks down, either because of pressure or because of all types of thoughts come, then we cannot really help that person. Sometimes it is a uh, situation where there is no return back. So therefore, in the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna, in, in chapter 6, he addresses us insights into with the workings of the mind. And if you don't know how this particular factory is working, then no matter what you try to produce outside, will not give you satisfactory life. There's a saying, uh, it said that if you want your life to be satisfactory, you need three factories running in your life. The sugar factory in your mouth, speak always sweet, uh, things that people will love to you know, talk to you. A, Ice factory in your head. Don't get hot-headed. Hindi we say, thanda rakho di marko. And a love factory in your heart. That, yes, people may not be nice to you, but at least you be nice to them. Don't uh, wish evil or something bad for others. And if you have this pot factory on your tongue, sugar factory, in your head, ice factory, and in your heart, love factory, then your life will become satisfactory. But it all begins with thoughts. And watch your thoughts, because your thoughts become your feelings. Once you start to think that I am not being, no, Respect it. Just, just that thought comes in your in your mind, or I didn't get what I should be getting. <coughs> then more and more the thoughts uh, you start to start to ponder negatively. Those negative thoughts start to become bitter feelings. My husband doesn't give me time. It's a thought, but then it turns into feelings, and feelings is where the emotions are involved. So therefore, our thoughts. Watch your thoughts, they become our feelings. And, and watch your feelings, they become your actions. Whatever action you, you make is because of the, but the feelings you have. And watch your, feel, watch your actions, they become your habit. And watch your habits, they become your lifestyle and your career. And it all starts with having... A proper thought. Thought is like a seed that once it starts to grow in a particular direction, it becomes very difficult for us to curb it. And nobody else can uh, allow us till we allow those thoughts to come in. So therefore, it's, this is a very uh, good quote that I put up. Your mind is your most valuable real estate. I don't know how many of you are going to have big real estate, big property, but this particular space, if you keep it clean, if you keep it sane, I'm sure whether you have a small space externally or not, you are going to have a great life. And then there is this principle that what you put into the mind, into the, into your, the thought factory, that's what is going to come out. There's a small little joke that says, you know, Einstein, he was known to have a genius mind. Galileo, he had a great mind. And uh, Newton, he had an extraordinary mind. Bill Gates, brilliant mind and then the student was asked what do you say about yours he said never mind <laughs> i don't want to know equate uh, with all this and we just 
नो लेट आवर माइंड बिकम ए डंपिंग यार्ड फॉर ऑल टाइप्स ऑफ पीपल थॉट्स नेगेटिव पॉजिटिव टू कम इन वी डोंट हैव ए फिल्टर एंड एस्पेशली नाउ विद रील कल्चर ऑन इंस्टाग्राम वी जस्ट फील दैट नो वॉट एवर कम्स इन इज वॉट इज टू बी कंज्यूम्ड एंड मोर देन यू नो फूड द थाट्स आर बींग ब्रॉट इन थ्रू ऑल द वीडियोज दैट वी आर वॉचिंग सो दे फॉर इट्स वेरी इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर अस टू हैव एन अंडरस्टैंडिंग दैट इफ यू डोंट ओवर सी what is coming into your life what is coming into your minds then you can't expect expect a peaceful sleep a a positive outlook especially when you start to have all types of negative things that are coming to our uh, conscious mind i'm just confused which is my laptop i just keep it here so the So there are four types of thoughts among the eighty thousand thoughts. We said that the, uh, prominently there are four types of thoughts that are coming. One is called as a routine thoughts. Any example of a routine thought that you have day daily when you get up in the morning? What's a routine thought that you, as a student, have? To do tasks like something specific. Okay. What what I'm going to eat today? Yes. I don't want to go to school. I don't want to go to school. <laughs> Thank you for being so honest. The first thought is, do I need? Do we really need to go to school? Is the credit so important today, or can I just hack in with some other things? Thank you. Any other routine thought that you get daily or really? What I'm going to eat? What is the class? Class timings today. All these are routine, no? and uh, you can't really uh, do away with routine thoughts. But at times uh, we do too much journey, too much investment. Just like what am I going to wear today? Any of you have uh, seen this? That it's not a very important occasion. It's just a regular school that you're going to go. but a lot of your energy goes in thinking aaj main kya pehen what what do i wear today and it's a dream it's it's energy pain but what we need to uh, make sure is that you know routine thoughts that we just focus on the essential or uh, aspects of it and uh, just deal with whatever is need need to be done in the routine life and some of us don't even you know we we don't make a plan for the day daily or schedule in fact many times what happens is we make plans for the unimportant aspects maybe <coughs> there's a match that we need to go or other things and the assignments they all start to pile up and then there is you no know, last minute uh, things or nowadays most colleges have online submissions and there's always a work around to make it look genuine especially now with chat gpt so but with routine thoughts we need to ensure that <clears throat> they are important they are necessary thoughts and we <clears throat> need to deal with these thoughts then there are waste thoughts nothing to do with apparently your life yes they they may be important in some other context what's happening in some other part of the world in uh, in india there's always some revolt happening something happening and the news keep coming up with episodes after episodes of what's happening and then we just you know spend our time thinking about this and it occupies a lot of space or some will say some something that's in your campus and these waste thought <clears throat> we need to eliminate it <clears throat> eliminate it 
as as much as you can eliminate it's not needed and therefore why to why, why to allow these waste thoughts to enter into your space and then stay in your space <clears throat> the second the third is negative thoughts waste is something just no not, nothing that where your feelings are involved but negative is where you actually feel hatred angry upset uh about what has happened in the past and you keep on churning you keep on not dwelling on that rather than learning from the past we start to live in the past and many of the things that has already happened we can't really do you selected a college and you are here and after one year of being here you start to go back and yes if it's diff- if it's that that much an issue then maybe it's a, a valid thought but many times whatever situation we are in the mind starts to put in a dissatisfactory you know uh role place that what you're doing is not right this is or what that person the teacher or your colleague or your friend or your family they are you no know, and you start to harbor negative thoughts about situations and in fact this has become so common that as soon as a thought comes usually it goes in the negative direction there's an exam next week as soon as this thought comes <clears throat> the negative you no know, element of that thought takes prominence thinking that i may not do well i may you no know, uh, it is going to take away my time anything as soon as a thought comes usually all the negative aspects of that start to come across in in our mind and then there are thoughts of service thoughts of self uh, uh no helping others and these positive thoughts are something that you no know, uplift us when you see someone uh <clears throat> doing a seva you no know, for setting up this there are so many volunteers when you do them you know, give their time or yashoda nandan who is there who is coming day in and day out to help the students so when you see a selfless act a act of positive positive welfare uh way back uh, i think it was edison edison when he was uh doing his research to invent a bulb at uh, that time uh, ford was one of the ones who helped him to uh, for all his research although you no know, a car manufacturing company and a electricity they had no connection in fact it was as if uh ford was uh removing electricity uh, elect- need for electricity now we have come back but way back then in 1900s ford initially wanted to make electric cars but then it was even electric bulb was not possible what was to electric car and then he went to gas and as he was you know making those machines it was edison who was making and you know, trying to do research into bulbs but both although they were different fields both helped each other and when edison was low he was you know, he was being ridiculed how many times did you do this experiment for supported him and it said later <clears throat> when uh, ford was in trouble then edison supported so this way both actually grew as friends uh, and both were you know great scientists that helped so much the world so when you see some kind of positive you know help that others do it really you know brings in great warm great you know empowerment courage yes there are people who, who can be depended upon so but among these four types of thoughts most of us are affected because the world is in itself is highly negatively oriented 
we are affected by the negative thoughts, the waste thoughts that just drain our energy. And, and the result of that is we see a lot of mental health issues, right from children uh, to the adults. And the reason for this is uh, not understanding where do we invest our energy in thoughts. Even Arjuna in the Gita, for the moment he went into this negative space that this war is not right, he went on an overdrive thinking all types of reasons and ultimately it made him feel discouraged and he gave up his weapons. So there is a small little story of a grasshopper and a uh, caterpillar, uh, not a caterpillar, a centipede. Centipede is a small little worm that has 100 legs and you might have seen earthworms or centipedes. So when they walk, it's quite graceful, you know, because they have 100 legs, so they walk. And uh, in this story, the centipede uh, also not just used to walk, but also used to dance, a great dancer. And everyone in the, in the jungle used to appreciate centipedes dancing. And the grasshopper also wanted to be a good dancer, but he just couldn't you know, uh, compete with centipedes dancing. And one day, the grasshopper came to the centipede and it asked, will you teach me dancing? And the centipede said, I never learned dancing. And if you don't learn, if something just comes innately, it's difficult to teach someone else. Yeah, I, I never learned. Then the grasshopper said, then at least tell me which leg you move first, which leg you move second, which leg you move third. <clears throat> the centipede said, even that I've never thought. But because you're asking, as I'm dancing, let me try to analyze. And the moment the, the music was on, the centipede started to make its move. It also wanted to record its movements. And as it started to think, which leg am I moving? It became so you know, worked into this analysis, this over analysis, that it forgot to dance in this smooth, graceful way. And it was just, you know, missing its steps. And it was because it was trying to you know, dance and also uh, you know, analyze it. And uh, this <clears throat> over analysis, or as, as you say, paralysis by analysis, that often our thought factory, it analyzes the situation so much, overthinking, that we many times like Arjuna, feel totally paralyzed or disabled that you really don't know whether this particular step is good or not. And often many of us go to Google and on Google, no matter what you put in, there will be positive replies, there will be negative replies. iPhone 16 Pro Max, is it really a good invention or not? You will find this, you will find that. You go to Amazon to buy something. And we all are into anyone being that, that you did so much research on what product to buy, you end up not buying any product. <laughs> Many of us. And that's what is parallel the analysis that the mind in the name of no. So overthinking is not right. But deep thinking is what is right. And the, and the art of deep thinking is what is the Bhagavad Gita. We need to think uh, about the life steps, but then not in a way where there is no direction. And today in our discussion, I just want to give a few uh, tips to you for this. This is a small little uh, clip about what overthinking looks like.
<laughs> he was not drawn but his mind made him feel he is drowning uh and students face this you know the stress all the time they feel that you know if i don't perform well and in that tension in that anxiety in that overdrive of negative thoughts they just lose whatever excellence they have and the thought factory ends up bringing out either you no know, dysfunctional products out or dysfunctional you no know, productivity or sometimes you no know, uh no productivity there for the happiness of your life depends on the quality of your thoughts and you, we need to raise the quality of our thoughts and the more we can raise the quality of our thoughts the more we can experience happiness and the world around us is just trying to make us consumer of their own intentions i write i write in this book that when someone comes to us giving us some something proposing it can either be an advertisement or it can be an advice most people that come they are advertising us something that they want to get from us that you take this but there are very few that actually you know have intention to help us truly which is like krishna's bhagavad gita where it was not an advertisement to take a path but it was genuine concern how can he help arjuna's mind arjuna's this over deluge of thought that he was having so because we don't have a lot of time the mind is compared to a Uh, intelligence there is a factor of intelligence that is over the mind which is the analyzing factor the mind is where it it's like a camera all types it just captures whatever is coming through the sensory inputs it just is capturing continuously and the in, the buddhi the intelligence is one that has the capacity to either accept the thoughts accept the sensory inputs and also how to see the sensory input that is coming in this small little story that uh once a little boy called as raju he was playing in a garden and he uh, a granny came to her him and she said she offered him some cashews cashews in india are called as kaju so he took this kaju and he you no know, he ate children like <coughs> so raju ate these nice kajus that were given by this granny and this was a repeated you no know, uh routine that every day granny was coming to this garden and she was offering him this cashews kajus and the raju was happily eating it one day is intelligence factor it clicked said why is this lady giving me kaju every day so he asked this boy asked this lady why are you giving me kaju every day i am not your like relative <coughs> or any why out of the blue why are you giving me so she said i actually love chocolate laden cashews but because i am old i can't chew the cashews they stuck into my teeth so what i do is i buy the cashews chocolate laden cashews i suck them and once the chocolate is over i don't want to throw these cashews you know so i just put them i just dry them up and then you know i wanted to give someone and you are the one who was taking it <laughs> and now is the same raju and it is the same kaju same input but now the intelligence has awakened to know that this 
kajus, this cashews that he was taking in, is not really healthy. Is not really hygienic. And so therefore, Krishna in the Gita, he says that the mind keeps on accepting whatever thoughts are coming till the scanner of the intelligence is properly tuned in. At airports, we all you know, go through this ordeal of taking our laptops and whatnot and putting into the scanner. And it is in the scanner that shows what's allowed and what's not allowed. So, and <clears throat> so saying that Krishna says the mind should be empowered with this analyze this you know, screening factor to not just let anything or anyone just take in and uh, live in your space, live in your mind. And he says, for one who has his mind empowered with his intelligence properly, the mind becomes his best friend. Atmano Bandur. The mind actually becomes a helpful guide, someone who can help. But one who just lets the mind be driven by the society's wants, by our friends or by anyone else, the mind becomes an enemy like a snake that is there inside not to help us but it starts to be more and more venom and poison therefore when it comes to our life our are we in our are we in the driver's seat or are we in the navigator that someone else is driving many times the life that we are living, the thoughts that we are having, is to is being implanted by expectations that the society has from us or the someone else. And we continuously are in this mode in trying to please others and not really taking lives and our own thoughts into our own you know, control and ensuring that, yes, many people expect many things from me, but what is it that I want from my life. Where do I want to go in my life? And therefore, when Arjuna was starting to say that what will what will what will happen to family, what will happen to this? Yes, they are all important factors, but you can't just decide what career to do just because your family wants or just because that's what you know is the best career. There's also that element that are you deciding choosing? based on your inclinations. So this is, a, this is the first factor which Krishna says, that restrain your mind have. Con, a controlled mind is one's best friend. An uncontrolled mind is one's worst enemy. Or it, or, or is it said, a mind that is controlled is the best servant and a mind that is uncontrolled is the worst master. And even to even in, even in terms of eating or you know, reading, studying. So many times we want to study, but this mind, they said, this is not the time. There's still time. And as we have said, sometimes you know, uh, students do ask me that. You know, you, what was your technique of studying in college? And I, I often say this that. My way of studying in the college was sitting in the class and hearing from the professor. Because most of the time, when we are sitting in the classroom, we are not in the classroom. <laughs> and when we are not in the classroom, when we are sitting in the dorm or in our room, then we are thinking what happened in the classroom. And the mind, you know, it just doesn't allow us to be there where we are supposed to be. And it displaces us, and then because we're not in the present, we are not able, never able to either study or you no know, experience the joy that comes from being in the present. So my way of studying, I always tell, is that when you're in the classroom, if you pay attention, seventy percent of your job is done. The rest is just to revive whatever is there. But if you if you miss out on that seventy percent. And then go to your friends and eat up their brain. 
what did the professor say or what is this concept you go to youtube and try to study doesn't work so this is one thing and another thing that krishna uh, tells arjuna uh, few tips to help us you know restrain and uh, ensure that the, our mind works to its best capacity he says ekaki yata chittatma he says that multitasking how many of you do multitasking multitask <laughs> <laughs> you are so vehemently telling about her <laughs> multitasking uh now with so many things happening i can't say that i don't do multitasking but a physical element a physical factor you can't be doing two physical things at once you can't be do, doing two intellectual things at once if yes you may be driving and you may be say hearing a talk but if you try to do you no know, driving on see a billboard then they can't conflict So when Krishna speaks about ekagya chitta, is that one faculty of your life? It has to be engaged in one element, and best is if all faculties are engaged simultaneously on the same thing. That's why you know the classroom situation is why best because you're seeing the teacher, you are hearing, and you are experiencing all others sitting and hearing. So it becomes all the more. And even research says, you know, multitasking doesn't really uh, give the best output because ten percent of your task is on one thing, another ten percent on another thing. The rest of the time is the brain is juggling between where to focus. Whereas if it is hundred uh, percent, then you are fully focusing there, and that's where also the chanting. and meditation works where you are consciously you know trying to bring the mind to one point whether it be god's holy name which is the most powerful easiest way or whether it be you no know, silencing our thoughts and trying to focus it just you no know, we all you no know, move our body but why is exercise a very conscious practice because when you do consciously something it 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 helps more than doing something unconscious so therefore taking our time a little bit to consciously silence all the thoughts purify all the uh, inputs that have come into our life daily or whenever uh, you come for this sessions is very important and another uh, thing that krishna says is that try to be in a rahasi sthita in a noise free zone if you really want to you know improve your, the quality of your thoughts you can't be in a zone where continuously so many thoughts are being you no know, you are taking it so in a noise way and i show this element of this this creates the most noise there's a book and then there is this continuously buzzing or something is Now some notification is coming, or you've just tempted there, because this seems boring. You don't get as much dopamine as you get from, you know, watching some TikTok or some read. And then Krishna says that the mind, if it's given too high task or too high expectation of yourself, it be, it it feels. overloaded and it just gives up that activity therefore krishna says don't you no know, give big big deadlines to your mind to your thoughts when then the mind is like a child it likes to do simple things so therefore give a, whenever you no matter how big is the task any of you gone on trekking so when you go on a trekking if you tell your system i need to reach top there yes initially it feels inspired just like a child is hyper enthusiastic feels inspired but after you go say 100 steps or 200 steps says 
it's too much i not even covered 20% or you no know, 10% it either gives up or you no know, it starts to you no know, look at others and you know try to also tell them not to go up <coughs> so in tracking or in achieving something you no know, worthwhile you have to give the mind slow steady steps krishna says in the gita raga dvesha vibhukteshu vishayan indreshwaran atma vashir vidayatma he, he uses his word called as atma vash whatever is in your capacity just let the mind do that much just tell okay if you can study for 10 minutes i'll not trouble you just study for 10 minutes and after 10 minutes you can tell the mind can you study 10 minutes more so that way uh, you, you can carry and also what it what this uh, thing means is that we carry baggage of expectations not just from ourselves but also from others and therefore krishna says nirashit aparigraha that being and uh, a more where we are not doing is the studies or whatever because we have a personal liking or a we are chosen to do this not we are being forced to do this as soon as there is the element of force the mind rebels chinchalam hi mana krishna pramadi bhavadrida so therefore there has to be something that you know you make the mind feel for it whether it be spirituality whether it be your studies whether it be anything that you do you have to have, you have, to have personal you know, liking for some element of it and then krishna he also tells about practicing cleanliness <coughs> if you have uh, your dorms or your rooms quite unkempt unclean dirty everything any everywhere then don't expect your mind to be very organized your surroundings influence your inner situ inner inner surroundings so therefore switch out the shape uh that's what another thing it says and and uh another tip that krishna gives in the in the thought factory again ekagramana that try to do with one pointed attention because how you do one thing is how you do everything and you don't don't expect that no with other things i'll be distracted and with with studies i'll be very focused that can't happen if you are distracted in your watching of entertainment sometimes even to watch entertainment 15 20 minutes we just goes in deciding what to watch and even within 5 minutes you are dissatisfied with what you are watching then you go to something else and at the end of one hour you are dissatisfied with your entertainment also and the same thing happens in the studies so therefore in whatever we do try to build bring in this element of being one point and uh, the last thing that i would share here is krishna speaks that these four things have to be in balance in the chandogya upanishad uh, it is said that the mind the ma- main way the mind is developed is to what we uh, eat the food uh, transform the external aspect of the food becomes excreta the middle aspect of it becomes our flesh but the most essential subtle aspect of the food becomes our mind in hindi there is a saying jaisa an waisa man so if your food is not sanctified is not pure is is, is coming from a disturbed situation then that will definitely affect your mind so therefore if you want to have a the thought factory to be uh, proper then also ensure that the food that you are eating you are consuming is also pure therefore in the you know in uh, 
in spirituality eating of food is considered a very we don't even call it as eating we call it as honoring we say honoring food we don't call eating food so because it's because it's such a essential element that helps our body impacts our body and also our mind and also krishna says yukta ahara viharas gita is not against recreation or vacation or entertainment krishna says that we need to have a break from if you are doing something there has to be a a break that that you no know, makes you more empowered to come back on that particular task and therefore you no know, uh going on a positive break this these kinds of sessions are where where you are inspired by in insights from the bhagavad gita from spirituality and you also will have you know, nice short kirtan now and also some nice prasad so and also krishna speaks about swap uh, sleep most of our sleeps are disturbed sleeps because there is no proper regulation on the sleep the just before we are sleeping we are on these gadgets watching what's happening in the world and then right after we wake up the first thing that we you now do is you know take a look at all the instagram posts that are there so rather than that ensure that the quality of your sleep is good because if your sleep is good then your mind can better function and a lot of problems today is because of irregular sleep lack of sleep or sleeping at wrong times at the times where you are not supposed to sometimes in the classroom or in the daytime the best time to sleep is at the night 9 to 5 or that's the best time where the body rejuvenate and there's a whole chart how each organ of our body rejuvenate is replenished detoxed at that at a particular hour <coughs> from 9 to 5 so therefore sleep is also so our physical lifestyle affects our you know mental well be and also work or exercise some some kind of you know physical uh, strain and a regulated timings for our work so krishna says a regulated lifestyle definitely helps the mind to be more positive and more strong so that it it is not hungry for uh, just taking in whatever things and then it becomes stressed out which is called in, in in bhagavad gita as the eight limbs that, that help us to become uh, more tuned in to take in more positive wisdom and uh, growth rather than becoming more and more a slave and of the thoughts that are just coming in and i hope you no know, there is more wisdom in the bhagavad gita as as in when you come for these sessions you start to learn more about your own inner workings and how you can best align that so you can become uh, happy prosperous and also satisfied really you know situate i'll stop here if you have any questions we can take so we uh, took in this thought factory how we are impacted by it. there are four types of thoughts and how these thoughts we need to regulate uh, we need to know eliminate the negative thoughts we need to deal with the routine thoughts we need to increase the positive thoughts and we need to you know decrease all the waste thoughts that are coming and what does it i speak about focus about how we need to practice focusing and filtering and uh, you know trying to situate having a clean lifestyle and also having a regulated lifestyle of proper eating proper sleeping proper 
regime for exercise or, or life. And if we regulate all this, then definitely our mind will be a, a much better friend than what it is now. This is in summary what we spoke. So, any of you have any questions or discussions? Yes. Um, so, like you suggested, we uh, we have the knowledge of what to do, but sometimes it can be hard to be consistent with even with this knowledge. Sometimes the mind doesn't want to, even though we know that's not right, our mind still wants to do it, and we are, then we try to avoid doing that, our mind gets into a state of uh, fighting and it, it becomes hard to follow what we know. Yes. Uh, sometimes uh, we start doing something and then after a point uh, we go back to the old cycle. So how do we uh, how do we use this knowledge and be consistent with that? Thank you. What's your name? Anirudh. Anirudh. Anirudh, thank you for the question. I just gave the example of trekking. Uh, trekking is not supposed to be done alone because there's all all the charts of these thoughts coming. I think it's too hard. Maybe better I just stay, uh, go back. We we usually do trekking in a company, in a group, because a group inspires each other to keep on going. So uh, therefore, Krishna says, Sangha, having a satsang, having a company of people who are inspired to you know, build themselves in the right direction helps our you know, these mental oscillations to be at bay. And Krishna also says the intelligence, the wisdom, why am I doing this? If it's not strong, then also just like you no, know, uh, it's usually difficult to wake up in the morning. But on days where you have to catch a flight, especially to India, <laughs> that day the mind will not say sleep more because that day your intelligence is super convinced about the activity that you are going to do and its importance. So when the intelligence is strengthened, then the mind can be easily you know, controlled. But when the intelligence, when we are ourselves not, not convinced, what we are doing, how it's going to help me. And when we don't have people who can inspire us when we are low. So these two elements, if you add in, of having of strengthening your intelligence through more wisdom of the steps that you have taken, why it is so important for you, and being aware, conscious, and also having right type of friends, right type of association will definitely allow the mind to not go into this you no know, oscillations. Okay. Thank you, Anirudh. Uh, I don't have a question per se, but I just wanted to comment on like it seems very accurate and happy slide in the presentation. Thank you. Yes. My question is um, why does the mind gravitate towards waste thoughts for inner like you know when you're when you're relaxing um or you want to break like you're saying breaks are important so when you're relaxing or when you're on break is when these waste thoughts are kind of like oh your brain kind of gravitates towards that because you don't have it's mindless you don't have to think and it's you know sort of occupying space so that allows you not to think so i guess i was wondering why is that why does that mechanism happen why does your brain gravitate towards waste when you're just trying to relax thank you you name it that's it thank you for your question one is uh, a long habit uh, for us to uh, Every action that we that humans do, the mind does, there's a need that it's trying to fulfill. And mind, as I said, is like a child. Children like stories. Children like stories. And the mind needs some information, some stories to fill itself up. 
and when we don't have positive stories positive you no know, stories to tell to the mind to think for the mind then it just you no know, looks into the world outside and whatever the news whatever whatever is there it just you no know, tries to stuff itself up so when we see the need of the mind and therefore the scriptures you no know, also tell a lot of stories uh, about krishna about the positive ways in which so many great souls have helped the world so hearing of these stories will that's why it said uh, the older habit in the ancient times was that in the night you hear stories about god before you sleep because the mind needs some kind of fulfillment just like we need to eat mind needs stories and when it hears the stories of something nice then it is satisfied but when it is not uh being filled its need then whatever is there it just fills it also so that's one thing another is uh it's gravitating towards that because that has been the habit since maybe lifetimes or since in this lifetime like so that's two reasons i, I would say any other yes last slide this one so these are called as you no know, eight steps to regulate to align the body and the mind to our divinity and krishna calls it ashtanga yoga this is a huge subject in itself but uh, what i discuss is each element from this <laughs> is what i discuss but technically uh, to go in this samadhi is where your entire being is you no know, aligned for abundance uh, it's called as in today's parlance it's called as abundance mindset where you totally uh, not having any types of fears of uh, or negative thoughts that i am being limited by something and you know dhyana dharana all these are by which we are able to hold the positivity in our mind and and before that comes all the other physical practices and also the regulations of ensuring that we are situated properly to so it's all a great science to uh, and what to, i share today is just a glimpse that krishna speaks in the Six chapter. Technically, it's called as Ashtanga. Any other uh, thoughts, questions, thought about thought? So, with this, I would uh, like to thank everyone for your kind attention and coming for the session on Thought Factory. Hopefully. some positive good you know uh, introspective thoughts have gone into your minds and uh, please keep coming uh, you don't become a graduate in one class you need to take many uh, classes so spiritual spirituality is a science so as you come in and you keep hearing from the bhagavad gita from those who you know, have lived this life to start to uh get more and more grasp of this and also as the more and more you practice the tips the steps that i have been taught here you don't have to be told that this is something that is helpful you will start to experience that it actually helps hari krishna thank you lakshmi thank you so Thank you so much, Prabhu, for the thoughtful session. So we'll have the theater now, and we have a couple of announcements after that. Please take care. Thank you. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna. Krishna Krishna Hari Hari 
हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्णा हरे कृष्णा 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 हरे हरे हरे
Student time is where you can really you know, change the course of your direct life, where you integrate your inner growth with your you know, external pursuits. So please do take this time, especially when you are away from a lot of social uh, life that happens in India. There's not much here and as you get into it, so please do take advantage. Thank you very much once again, Prabhu. Uh, so, like, these are the books from Prabhuji. If anyone wants to, uh, you know, take them or like buy them, also, like, Prabhuji will be here for a couple of minutes. If anyone has any questions that they want to ask him, of course. Uh, so, the other announcement is that, like, we will have our main event of this semester, which is Diwali on 31st. And we are taking in. <laughs> Yeah, October 31st. Yeah. Uh, also, like, we are taking in volunteers to uh, manage like, certain departments. So, if anyone is interested, we will send a Google form on the group for you to fill. Like, we have many interesting departments for you to help us. And, and uh, the next announcement is that we changed our uh, like serving place from outside to inside. So, like, please feel free to form a line over here so that we will be able to Thank you. 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 Thank you.